Galactic Standard Date. Year, 11356. Day, 91. Soul Standard Date, 4th of the 3rd, 3267. The High Council had convened once more. They were missing Tama still, but Kane was back at his station. They all gathered into their respective seats on the sidelines of the massive Senate floor. The lights dimmed down to near nothing before a spotlight appeared over the central speaker's platform, revealing the speaker to be Azira. Azariah cleared her throat and began her address. Gentle beings, I received a black box message from my task force that was sent to retrieve the attorney that went missing. Honestly, I have watched it myself already. What I saw was terrifying yet incredibly enlightening. I propose that we simply ask for a vassalization of our galactic compact into this Terran government. I know that we have had this debate before. I am also now aware that we had only seen an actual cargo ship, a rather small one at that. Here is the full unedited recording, she said, as the Senate floor lit up with a 360 degree video of the whole black box recording from the point that the task force dropped from warp. All of the council collectively gasped at the sight of the massive ships. One was the size of a small planet. Around nine others seemed like they were made up of the mass from half of a small moon. All aside from the planet-sized ship looked like deadly blades. The whole surface was rather flat, aside from some spikes jutting forth here and there, but the sides tapered off into a blade. The sides actually gleamed as if they were sharpened. There were several cries of outrage at the absurdity of it all. Why turn your ships into swords, after all? The planet-sized ship then began to charge up energy readings that made no logical sense before firing off the energy equivalent of a white dwarf star. The energy was directed to something in the great expanse of the void, so the council tried to trace where the ship was leading. That's when they saw the tear in reality. Through the tear, they could see a domain that was inhospitable to all life, and stretching forth from that pale green land was a giant yambi. The Yambi Council, Fuki, yelled out in fright, No! That's impossible! The size of that thing alone is physically impossible. This has to be some kind of hoax. My people cannot grow to that size, let alone to the fact that it is a living and breathing creature coming into space. I refuse to accept this! He yelled. Azariah just sighed. All this going on and that's what you have an issue with? What about the fact that it is crossing dimensions? As a flesh and blood being, it is crossing a dimensional divide. Also, what of the lands it is clearly coming from? Does it not look like a hellscape? Finally, what of the fact that these Terrans just fight a weapon capable of vaporizing a home from there? A regular supernova can have the effect seen up to 1,000 light years away. They are only 1,200 light years away. They also directed the explosion. They have the biggest gun in the universe, and they are pointing it at a giant interdimensional Yambi. She said. Rella just sat down and slumped over. The rest of the council started murmuring as the video went on. Then, a bright flash of light as the supernova made contact with the space yambi. Then it was gone, along with the rift it came from. The council was on the edge of their collective seats as another rift opened up, revealing yet another yambi of the same size as the last. The main ship did not fire, most likely it could not fire in rapid succession. Instead of the planet shooting another death beam, the nine large ships spread out and nailed it with something that was somehow moving faster than light. The energy spike from the ship, and the time it took to make contact with and obliterate the Yambi made no sense. The council yelled in outrage once more. That was when Azariah paused the video. Gentle beings, what you are about to see will be much worse than the simple weapons of science that you saw before. What you are about to see may instill some form of primal fear within some of you. When I saw it myself, well, I am ashamed to say that I fainted, she said, as she unpaused the video. The entire room had grown silent as they focused on what had made Azariah apparently faint. That's when they saw a green bubble begin to form around the ship. The bubble appeared to be made of a cold green flame. Then they saw the silhouette of a Terran within the bubble that was protecting them from harm. Most of the council was frozen in one way or another. A few had collapsed into their species-specific position of prayer. Then, the real fight began. Three of those monstrous Yambi came out, 
and a directed attack from the majority of the fleet tore one of them to shreds. Half of the council rejoiced until they saw that it was beginning to heal at an alarming rate. Then the Terrans assumed a defensive position, where they poured the attack onto one of the Yambi until it died. That's when the other Yambi used that one as a me shield, and pressed the attack for several minutes before a wall of flame appeared in space. Then the council caught wind of what looked like crescent blades made of the same green fire being fired into the flaming wall. The speeds being read off were at least 15c, which means that they were now in a fight between literal gods. After several minutes of suspense, the council finally saw something get fired from the Terran ship. A closer inspection revealed it to be a Terran in full battle armour. But what hope could a single Terran trooper have? As Araya fast forwarded until the Terran had landed on the wall. The wall kept flaring out, pushing the Yambi back a few hundred light seconds. The council was on edge, waiting with bated breath for the finisher, when they noticed that the big ship was finally charging its attack again. The sun fired off at only half the energy readings from before. The lone soldier was still in the path of the shot, fighting off the enemy until the last second. Then, the supernova hit the soldier and the wall. The wall itself burst into an insanely large green flame that massacred two of the Yambi, before the one that had hung back disappeared into the ether. The council started clapping and yelling in joy at the sight of it. The change in heart from fear to awe and admiration was shared by all but a few of the council members. Kane, Ven, and Fuki were taken aback by the sudden change in heart from the rest of the council. As Araya had turned the video off and had started her closing speech, these Terrans possess powers beyond our comprehension, yet they went out of their way to protect a strike force that was there for the express purpose of infiltrating their ships. I now doubt that these Terrans are evil. It looks to me as though they have been trying to protect life while those abominations try to destroy it. That's why we should... She was cut off, as a chill descended upon the entire room. The room was still at a comfortable temperature, but no individual felt any warmth, only the cold embrace of death. Then they saw ten little green flames appear in thin air above Azariah, who probably ran off the stage as fast as she could. The fires then grew slightly outwards, revealing tiny black dots within. The fires then began to pull away from one another as the reality in between cracked and split to reveal a positively titanic being. The being was seemingly made from black metal and spikes. He had wings that were metal but looked scaled. The man smiled and revealed a set of fangs, not unlike Azariah's. Hello, my name is Basilus and I have come to protect you. I would like to enter an alliance with the Galactic Compact on behalf of all mankind. By the way... You may not recognize them, but I've brought you your people back, he said.